Welcome to another episode of Ancient Asian Legends. I'm your host, Mei Li Soon. In the last episode, Wukong resigned as deputy stable master in the heavenly realm, returned to Hua Guoshan Mountain, and declared himself the great sage equal to heaven. The Jade Emperor issued a capture order, dispatching Commander Li, the pagoda-bearing heavenly king, and his son, heavenly prince Na Jia. They confronted Wu Kong, who faced a formidable challenge from the frontline warrior, giant spirit god, threatening to crush Wu Kong in an instant. Today, we uncover the outcome of this epic showdown. This story is adapted from the original text of Journey to the West, written by Wu Cheng En in 1592. But that's not all. Stay tuned for our proverb of the day, infusing our narrative with timeless Asian wisdom. Without delay, let's dive into chapter six. Great sage equal to heaven. Chapter six, great sage equal to heaven. Commander Li, the pagoda bearing heavenly king and his son, heavenly prince Najia, arrived at Hua Guoshan to capture Wukong. They dispatched the formidable giant spirit god, who issued a direct challenge, warning of a swift defeat. Wu Kong, upon hearing this, responded angrily. Arrogant deity, cut the bragging and loose talk. I was thinking of giving you a taste of my staff, but I'll let you off easy. Hurry back to the heavens and deliver a message to the Jade Emperor. He's not utilizing talents wisely. Sun Wu Kong has endless skills, yet he has me tending to horses. Check out my banner's inscription. If he promotes me as it suggests, I'll lay down my arms, bringing peace to heaven and earth. But if he delays, I'll march straight to the Lingxiao Palace and ensure he can't comfortably sit on his dragon throne. The giant spirit god swiftly scanned the wind's direction and spotted a towering pole just beyond the door. Draped from the pole was a banner emblazoned with the empowering proclamation, Great Sage Equal to Heaven. The giant spirit god sneered three times, disdain etched across his face as he proclaimed, This dang monkey, clueless about the real world, has the nerve to act all high and mighty, calling himself the great sage equal to heaven. Watch me teach him a lesson with a swing of my axe. Determined, he swung his axe at the monkey king's head. Yet the monkey king deftly countered with his enchanted staff, sparking an intense battle. The staff clashed with the axe in a dance of unknown depths. They wove and whirled, one shrouded in mystery, the other exuding grandeur. Clouds and mists billowed as techniques were unleashed, scattering earth and tossing up sand. The Monkey King's transformations were a spectacle. The staff rose like a dragon in water, and the axe's approach mimicked a phoenix threading through flowers. Despite the giant spirit's renown, his abilities proved lacking. The great sage deftly twirled his iron staff, and with a swift strike, the giant spirit's entire body went numb. The giant spirit god crumbled under the monkey king's onslaught, desperately wielding his axe to block a forceful blow to his head. A resounding snap echoed as the axe handle broke in two, prompting the giant spirit to hastily retreat, fleeing the battlefield. The monkey king chuckled, remarking, You chicken, you got lucky this time. Now scram and spread the word. Move it, spread the word. The giant spirit god rushed back to the camp gate and promptly approached the heavenly king Lee, hastily dropping to his knees, uttering, Deputy stable master's got some dang powerful mojo. I couldn't tussle with him and had to hightail it out to there. I'm sorry and ready for whatever punishments come in my way. Furious, Heavenly King Lee said, This rogue has impeded my progress. Bring him forth for execution. Naja, the Heavenly Prince, stepped forward and pleaded, Dad, chill out. Forgive giant spirit screw up. Let me deal with him and see how tough he really is. The heavenly king heeded the advice, instructing them to return to the camp to await further punishment. The heavenly prince Najai, dressed in complete armor, 
leaped out of the camp and charged towards the water curtain cave. At that moment, Sun Wukong was in the process of withdrawing his troops and witnessed Na Jia's fearless approach. Adorned with a majestic horn atop his head and a cascade of fur gracefully draping his shoulders, Na Jia, the heavenly prince, emanated an aura of mystery, intelligence, and elegance. He proudly carried the celestial lineage of a heavenly dragon, resembling a radiant phoenix cloaked in the ethereal hues of clouds. Naja's extraordinary figure boldly challenged earthly conventions, defying mortal comparisons with exquisite grace. Adorned with six divine instruments, he embodied divine prowess, effortlessly soaring through the skies and shape-shifting in limitless ways. In recognition of his celestial eminence, the Jade Emperor conferred upon him the prestigious title of the Prince of Three Altars. Sun Wukong approached and inquired, Hey, who's this little brother wandering into our turf? What's your deal? Naja sternly retorted, You fool of a demon monkey! Do you not recognize me? I am Naja, the third prince, son of the pagoda-bearing heavenly king, Li Jing. I'm here on the Jade Emperor's orders to capture you. Sun Wukong laughed and replied, Young prince, your baby teeth haven't even fallen, and your hair is barely dry. Yet you dare utter such grand words? I'll spare your life and refrain from striking you. Just take note of the inscription on my banner and convey this to the Jade Emperor. If he grants me the position I desire, I'll willingly comply. But if it doesn't align with my desires, I'll march straight to the Lingxiao Palace and assert my position. Looking up, Naja saw the four characters, Great Sage equal to heaven. Naja exclaimed, How dare this demon monkey brag like that? No worries, my sword will teach him a lesson. I'll just stand here and let you take a few swings with that sword of yours. Enraged, Naja shouted, Transform! And transformed into three heads and six arms, fiercely wielding six different weapons. The demon slaying sword, the monster cutting knife, the demon binding rope, the monster subduing club, the embroidered ball, and the fire wheel. With a menacing aura, he attacked with a flurry of strikes. Sun Wukong, astonished, thought, This young guy sure thinks he's got something special. Time to show off my divine skills. The great sage thundered transform and manifested three heads and six arms, each wielding a golden hooped staff. With six hands, he expertly countered Naja's assault. This dynamic clash sent shockwaves through the earth, making mountains quiver, creating a spectacular display of fierceness and intensity. In the heat of their intense clash, Naja and Wukong stood as formidable adversaries. Naja wielded the demon slaying sword with swift and fierce strikes, while the monster cutting knife slashed through the air with determination. The demon binding rope moved like a flying python, and the monster subduing club took on the appearance of a wolf's head, both serving as agile weapons in Naja's skilled hands. The fire wheel spun brightly casting a radiant glow, and the embroidered ball rolled with rapid precision. On the opposing side, the great sage displayed incredible agility and strategy, skillfully manipulating three sections of the compliant golden-hooped staff. Every block and dodge were executed with precision, revealing Wukong's mastery of his enchanted weapon. The struggle was palpable, with neither combatant gaining a decisive advantage as Prince Naja tenaciously held his ground, refusing to yield. In a breathtaking spectacle, Naja unleashed a torrential transformation of his six weapons, multiplying them into thousands that cascaded upon his opponent's head. Unfazed, the Monkey King exuded confidence, laughing with gusto as he deftly manipulated the golden hooped staff through agile maneuvers. Employing one move to thwart a thousand attacks and a thousand to block ten thousand, he danced in the air like a whirlwind of chaotic dragons. Demon kings in their caves quivered with fear, and the ghosts and monsters in the mountains hastily sought refuge. 
Naja's divine weapons radiated a fierce and daunting aura, while the golden-hooped staff emitted a sharp hiss, cutting through the air and contributing to the symphony of sounds in the intense battle. On one side, heavenly soldiers erupted in passionate cheers, while on the other, the monkeys and animal demons confidently waved their flags. Both factions actively plunged into the battle, their strength and flexibility weaving an uncertain tapestry of outcomes. The third prince and Sun Wukong engaged in 30 rounds of an intense dance of combat. The prince's six weapons transformed into countless shapes mirroring Sun Wukong's golden hooped staff, which assumed myriad forms. The sparks ignited by their clash painted the sky with the brilliance of a meteorite shower leaving the battlefield shrouded in suspense as no discernible victor emerged. Amidst tumultuous chaos, Wukong deftly seized a single strand of hair, issuing a resounding transform. The hair swiftly metamorphosed into Wukong's true form. The deceptive imposter, now armed with a staff, cunningly posed as Wukong beguiling Naja. Simultaneously, Wukong's authentic body surged forward, closing the distance swiftly behind Naja, and delivered a decisive strike to the left shoulder. Despite Naja's attempt to wield his magic, he heard the whistling of the staff, attempted a desperate dodge, yet succumbed to the attack. Enduring the pain, he hastily fled the scene. Retracting his magical prowess, Wukong repossessed the six weapons, reverted to his original form, and tactically retreated, leaving the battlefield. General Li had long discerned the situation and urgently sought reinforcements. Suddenly, the prince hastened forward and, with a trembling voice, informed, Dad! The deputy stable master is seriously tough. I used all my magical powers, but I couldn't hold my own, and now my arm's all messed up. The Heavenly King was greatly alarmed and questioned, How can he overcome the strength of your magical abilities? He slaps up this flag outside his crib, bragging about being the great sage equal to heaven. He straight up says, If the Jade Emperor hooks me up with that title, I'm chillin'. No more beef. But if not, we're rolling up to the Ling Xiao Palace to settle this. Considering the current situation, it is advisable to abstain from extended conflict with him. Instead, ascend to the heavenly realm, promptly report this issue, and mobilize additional celestial troops to encircle and apprehend him. Ample time remains for the implementation of this proactive course of action. The prince and the heavenly king expeditiously withdrew to the heavenly realm to report the situation. Back at the mountain, the Monkey King's triumphant return stirred cheers from the 72 Demon Kings and his six brothers. Amid the jubilant atmosphere of Water Curtain Cave and Hua Guoshan Mountain, festivity soared to limitless heights. However, he turned to his six brothers, urging, Since I'm the Great Sage equal to heaven, why not let all of you embrace the title of Great Sage too? The Bull Demon King enthusiastically proclaimed, my brother's got a point. Y'all hear this. From now on, I proudly declare myself as the peerless heaven sage. The dragon demon king confidently asserted, I'll take on the title of ocean conquering great sage with delight. The rock demon king cheerfully declared, I'm pleased to be the chaos ruling great sage. The lion camel demon king joyfully announced, I'm thrilled to be the mountain-moving great sage. The macaque demon king happily proclaimed, I accept the title of wind-penetrating great sage. The rhesus demon king happily affirmed, I'm delighted to be the deity-dispelling great sage. At this moment, the seven great sages asserted their identities, assigned names and titles to themselves, celebrated, rejoiced for a day, and then dispersed. However, General Li and the third prince leading the troops, wearily marched to the Lingxiao Palace. With a defeated tone, they confessed, In compliance with the imperial decree, our delegation descended to the mortal realm with the mission to suppress the demon and immortal Sun Wukong. Unfortunately, his celestial might proved formidable, 
and triumph remained elusive. We earnestly implore your majesty to deploy reinforcements to ensure a decisive resolution. The Jade Emperor responded, Can we really consider a mere demonic monkey as formidable enough to warrant the deployment of additional troops? The prince stepped forward and pleaded, I'm begging you, your majesty, please forgive us. This monkey dude with his iron staff totally took down the giant spirit god and messed up my arm. He slapped up a flag outside his crib saying he's the great sage equal to heaven and all that. He's like, if you stop messing with me, I'll back down. But if not, I'm going to roll up to the Lingxiao palace and cause a scene. The Jade Emperor was taken aback and exclaimed, Such audacity from this monkey. Instruct the generals to eliminate him immediately. Tai Bai Jinxing stepped forward and conveyed, The monkey talks big, but lacks authority insight. Entangling our forces in a battle is strategically unwise. Your Majesty, a wise move is to show kindness by granting the title Great Sage Equal to Heaven through a decree. Make it an honorary title with no real responsibilities or rewards. This approach allows us to influence and control arrogance, ensuring peace in the realm. I endorse your proposal, said the Jade Emperor. He promptly issued a decree and tasked Tai Bai Jinxing with its delivery. Tai Bai Jinxing returned to the southern gate of heaven and went straight to the Water Curtain Cave and Hua Guoshan Mountain. This time, something feels different. A majestic and awe-inspiring aura permeated the surroundings, accompanied by an ominous and menacing atmosphere. Diverse demons filled the scene, wielding an array of weapons such as swords, spears, knives, and staffs, while roaring and leaping energetically. As soon as Tai Bai Jinxing appeared, they all approached aggressively, ready to attack. Tai Bai Jinxing said, Let the leaders come forward. Send someone to inform your great sage. I am a messenger sent by the Jade Emperor with a royal edict to invite him. The demons quickly ran inside to report. There's this old dude outside saying he's a celestial messenger with some imperial decree asking for you. Great, great. It's probably the same Tai Bai Jin Xing who dropped by before. Even though the official title they pitched wasn't that exciting, I did get to wander around the heavens. I still remember the ins and outs of the heavenly gate. This time, he's got to have something good in mind. Wukong directed the demon leaders to welcome Tai Bai Jinxing with grandeur. The great sage, clad in armor and yellow robes, donning cloud shoes, led a troop of monkeys and briskly emerged from the cave. He bowed in salutation and exclaimed, Hey, awesome deity! Step right in! Apologies for the not-so-impressive greeting. I bring news, great sage. Previously, you resigned from the minor official position in the Imperial Stables due to dissatisfaction. Officials from the Stables reported this to the Jade Emperor. In response, the Jade Emperor emphasized the principle that all appointments start from humble positions and ascend, questioning the dissatisfaction with a smaller role. Following this, General Lee, accompanied by Najar, was sent to the mortal realm for battle. The great sage's extraordinary abilities resulted in their defeat. They reported to the Jade Emperor that you raised a flag, expressing the desire to be the great sage equal to heaven. Despite hesitation among other military officials, I took the initiative, convincing the Jade Emperor to avoid deploying troops. Your Majesty approved the proposal, prompting me to extend this invitation. Thanks for showing up and having my back once more. But seriously, does the heavens actually have a title like Great Sage Equal to Heaven? This title received approval following my proposal. I have arrived only after confirming the official decree. Any potential issues will be under my responsibility. Wukong was overjoyed and insisted on hosting Tai Bai Jinxing for a feast. But Tai Bai Jinxing declined. Together... They rode on auspicious clouds to the outer southern gate of heaven. The celestial attendants and heavenly generals greeted them with respect, escorting them directly to the Lingxiao Palace. Tai Bai Jinxing reported, By imperial decree, 
I announced that Deputy Stablemaster Sun Wukong has arrived. The Jade Emperor said, Sun Wukong, approach. Today I bestow upon you the esteemed title of Great Sage Equal to Heaven, the highest of ranks. However, I admonish you to proceed with due caution and refrain from impulsive actions. Wukong graciously bowed in gratitude. Subsequently, the Jade Emperor directed officials Jang and Lu to construct a residence for the Great Sage Equal to Heaven on the right side of the Peach Blossom Garden. Two bureaus named the Tranquil Bureau and the Serenity Bureau were established within the residence. Both bureaus were staffed with celestial officers providing assistance. Furthermore, the Jade Emperor dispatched the, the Deity of the Five Constellations to joyfully escort Wukong to his new position. As a symbol of honor, Wukong was presented with two bottles of imperial wine and ten golden flowers. He received explicit guidance to channel his concentration, uphold focus, and embrace virtuous conduct, avoiding any impulsive actions. Wukong promptly embraced the directives and, on the same day, accompanied the deity of the five constellations to the recently erected residence. They drank, danced, and celebrated with the attendants. Upon bidding farewell to the deity, Wukong experienced genuine contentment. Immersed in heavenly delights, he actively reveled in a blissful existence, unencumbered by worries and obstacles in the celestial abode. Curious about the twists ahead? Wondering what's in store for our great sage equal to heaven now that he's rocking the heavens? Tune in for the next episode of Ancient Asian Legends. Our proverb of the day is the following. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. This proverb encapsulates the profound notion that embarking on a challenging journey requires taking that initial, seemingly modest step. It underscores the significance of commencing the voyage, no matter how small the first stride may be. The essence lies in recognizing that every monumental achievement starts with the willingness to initiate, emphasizing the power of determination and perseverance in the face of grand aspirations. It serves as a motivational reminder that progress is made by focusing on the present moment and taking that crucial first step toward the ultimate destination. That's it for our proverb of the day. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Today's episode was adapted and translated by Maylee Soon with original music by Jeff Harvey, Coma Media, Hot Dope, and Studio Columna. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share the joy with others. What upcoming challenges will our great sage confront next? Join us in the next Ancient Asian Legends for more magic. Until then, take care and stay enchanted. <laughs>